dear students good morning to all of you i am dr godbole mahendra tukaram welcoming you all on our online teaching platform in today's lecture i am going to talk about the indian stratigraphy the indian stratigraphy is most important branch of the geology which deals with the description classification and interpretation of the different stratas and the stratas may be the sequential arrangement of the layers sequential arrangement arrangements of the layers is known as the stratigraphy this is a a brief definition of the indian stratigraphy and the indian stratigraphy is also known as a classical geology because the vaidyanathan and the coworker has referred uh, the alternative word for the classical geology as a, a indian stratigraphy as a classical geology so in present uh, today's first lecture i will talk about the indian stratigraphy in brief before going to talk about uh, uh, to deal with the actual cratons and the mobile belts uh, i mean to say that the indian subcontinent or the indian stratigraphy is supposed to be the admixture of the cratons and mobile belts and many other protozoic platformal basins as well as the gondwanians and the uh, deccan volcanisms are, the, are also the part of the indian stratigraphy but coming to the actual uh, uh point of the today's lecture so i will describe in brief about how the indian subcontinent is supposed to be extends from 3200 km from the north to south and 2900 km from the west to east and it is located between the latitudes 4 degree and 45 6 degree and 45 north at the uh, indira points and india has the diverse geology with the different rock types and representing a complete spectrum india has a complete spectrum means in indian subcontinent we will find the different kinds of the uh, rocks uh, which are having the uh, various kinds of the geological ages from some of the oldest archaeans that uh, dhavo cratons and so on uh, we will uh, learn under the banner of the archaean and the metamorphites uh, and then granitoids to the angust quaternary alluviums means from the archean to the alluvium alluvium or the recent formations maybe the cenozoic formations we will find in indian subcontinent particularly in the himalayan regions as well as in the coastal regions indian subcontinent is a tectonically and physiographically divided into three broad domains so which are those domains so coming to the first uh, which are those domains these are supposed to be the different domains of the indian subcontinent here from here to here we will talk it as a peninsular regions and the northern region is known as an extra peninsula extra peninsular extra peninsular region and this is the peninsular region the tapering portions of uh, uh, from particularly uh, the gujarat and the ganga ganga deltas towards the southern portion this tapering portion is known as the peninsular peninsular region and the indo gangetic plain this plain is also the most important part Indian subcontinent is a tectonically divided into the extra peninsular India, Indo-Gangetic, and the Brahmaputra plain. That Indo-Gangetic plain is in sandwiched between the shields, which has been sandwiched. This plain has been sandwiched in the extra peninsular regions and this uh, southern region. Indo-Gangetic Brahmaputra plains. Indo-Gangetic plain is in sandwiched between the shield areas of the peninsular India and the highly deformed shoots of the Himalaya, because Himalaya has a, a continuous orogenic activities 
and the height of the himalaya is goes on increasing because of the uh, tectonism uh, which lies in the uh, asian or the uh, that uh, the eurasian and indian subcontinent which is going to be colliding and that is the convergent uh, convergent type of the plate boundaries convergent type of the collision is taking place and comprising essentially the anger meta sediments which are occurring in subcontinents this is the extra peninsular regions of indian subcontinent here we will have a different kinds of the ranges of the himalayas the shivalik range and the middle portion is known as a great himalaya great himalaya followed by the zanskar ranges and then uh, uh, then this is a ladakh range and uh, following uh, the different kinds of the hindu kush and the uh, other pamir north is located and that himalaya has the two side bends and this is known as a syntaxial syntaxial bend syntaxial bend is located into the both the sides in the in the north western as well as the north eastern side we will have the syntaxial bends this is the satellite imagery of the indian extra peninsular regions of the himalayan ranges particularly that the highest peaks or the uh, snow filled uh, area is supposed to be the highest uh, himalayan uh, zone highest himalayan region then peninsular india is uh, the main repository because once we are going to talk about the indian subcontinent we will have the different kinds of uh, the uh, uh, repository of the economic minerals exposes the rocks units almost the entire spectrums of the geological uh, ages of the rocks uh, maybe from the archaeans to the cenozoics and some of uh, those things have been already discussed in the last slides and those uh, in isolated small patches along with the oldest supra crystals are recorded from the south eastern central and western parts of the country so those patches have the oldest rocks and uh, it display some tectonic magmatic episodes uh, actually that revoking and the remobilization was a spontaneous process at the time of the evolution and at the time of the growth of the crust or the crustal growth or the crustal evolution and coming to the anger formations like the gondwana rocks uh, those may be the paleozoic and then mesozoic periods and so on and the, and for the paleozoic and mesozoic followed by the gondwana or the volcanisms which also uh, uh, the is a part of or the silent features of the indian stratigraphy so this is the peninsular region the some some parts of the peninsula particularly that south eastern part of the peninsular regions here we will have the different nuclei of uh, the archean uh, nuclei uh, this is supposed to be the eastern portion of the dharwar craton you know that how the dharwar craton is divided into the two portion that is the western dharwar craton and the eastern dharwar craton and this is the dharwar craton this is a bastar craton and this is the singabum or the orissa craton that is the portion of the northeastern sides and this singabum craton is also known as an eastern indian craton that is also denoted by the eic and this is all about the peninsular uh, india and uh, extra peninsular india in this regions we will have a different kinds of the rocks like here we will have a deccan uh, volcanisms and uh, those are the supposed to be the protozoic protozoic platformal basins or uh, maybe the kadappa super group this is in kadappa kadappa is a crescent shaped formation and which is uh, the repository for the diamond or the diamond bearing diamond bearing formation that kadappa basin is known for the diamond bearing formation and chhattisgarh basin is also known for the iron and the manganese and uh, coming to the part of uh, uh, the eastern the eastern this is in uh, this kinds of the uh, lithology shows that here we will have the singabum and the orissa craton so this was all about the formations of the different kinds of the rocks 
This is the Indian uh, or the Indo-Gangetic Brahmaputra plain, which is the four land basins tectonized or sandwiched between the peninsular, uh, southern peninsular regions and then Himalayan mountain regions. And due to the upliftment of the later has been and filled by the sediments derived from both the sides, especially from the Himalaya by the rivers like the Ganga, Brahmaputra, Indus and uh, have been termed as an Indo-Gangetic Brahmaputra alluvium. So this is satellite imagery of the Indo, Ganga and the Brahmaputra alluvium. We, in this region we will have the Brahmaputra. This is the region of the Indus and different kinds of the China, Bravi and Chelam and Satra so on. Those rivers can make the profile or the catchment of uh, uh, the uh, river of uh, the Indus. And this is the extra peninsular uh, uh, regions and the evolution of the Himalaya. How the Himalaya might have been evolved because in the Archean regions that the Himalaya was, which was not existed but later on it has been uh, developed due to the orogenic, orogenic activities. Maybe the Indian subcontinent as a one counterpart as well as the Eurasian plate was a another counterpart and there was a collision collision and then subductions and so on and as we move from the southern sides towards the northern regions we will have the gradual uplifting or the gradual increasing of the Himalayan ranges and then highest uh, this is supposed to be the peak of the Himalaya or the uh, the great Himalaya and uh, as we move from the uh, uh, slope side that is the Himalaya or the frontal thrust or the lesser Himalaya as uh, we, we move towards these regions, we will have the different kinds of the Himalayan uh, ranges. And then Himalayan, Himalaya itself has a different kinds of uh, the faults, maybe the normal faults may be very prominent in these Himalayan regions. And the different kinds of the zones can also be seen that thrust zone, thrust faults and normal faults and shear zones we will have. These are the different kinds of the Himalaya from the sub-Himalayan uh, regions to the high Himalayan or the crystalline Himalaya. We will have the different kinds of the Himalayan ranges. So this is the uh, Karakoram front and the other formations of the Himalayan regions. This is the Karakoram range. This is, these are the peaks of the Himalayan regions. This is the Karakoram regions. The southern Indian Peninsula still comprises the Dhawa cratons in the, in, the, in the north and the southern granulite terrains in the south with the boundary called as informal lines. Then Palagat Kaveji uh, shear zone divides the northern Archean craton. So we are discussing about the first, first craton. This is the first craton. And the first craton is supposed to be the Dhawa craton. But before going to talk about the Dhawa Kraton, before going to talk about the Dhawa Kraton, I would like to give the small or the brief sketch of my today's uh, presentation. Uh, how many, uh, you know, apart from the physiographic divisions which have been discussed earlier. So what will be the scheme of my present talk? That scheme I would like to uh, show here. So scheme of presentation. So in today's presentation, we will talk about uh, the three cratons. Three cratons, you know already how the cratons are supposed to be the tectonically, tectonically stable stable landmass is known as the cratons and in today's lecture we will discuss about the three cratons first one will be the dharwar craton dharwar craton second one will be the buster buster craton and sometimes buster craton is also referred as the bandara Bandara Craton and third one will be the Eastern 
Eastern Indian Crater and it is also known as the Orissa or Singhbhum Singhbhum Crater sometime that Eastern Indian Crater can be referred as a Orissa or the Singhbhum Crater which lies in the the maximum portion of this crater lies in the Orissa this is the one part of my today's lecture and the next component of today's lecture will also be discussed like uh, the different kinds of the mobile belts in this region we will talk about the mobile belts mobile belts are almost proterozoic proterozoic and those proterozoic mobile belts are supposed to be the uh, platformal basins and the first proterozoic basin will be the mobile belts will be the satpura how the satpura has been evolved by the tectonic tectonisms or the amalgamations of the northern crustal provinces and the southern crustal provinces which were amalg amalgamated and collided towards each other and formed and this formation at the northern sides we will have the uh, vindian basin vindian proterozoic basins and southern sides we will have the source of formation a source of orogeny source of orogeny which is uh, uh, the repository the main repository of the world's richest manganese ore manganese manganese ore as well as the iron orogeny iron is also occurring in the different uh, uh, formations of uh, the same region particularly in the saucer region particularly in the dongargad uh, or uh, the other regions particularly uh, uh, in the different uh, parts of uh, or the different districts of the maharashtra maybe in the bandara gondia chandrapur and so on and the next one will be the next one protrusive formation will be the eastern ghat mobile belt and third one will be the pandian mobile belt pandian mobile belt so this will be the brief uh, sketch of my today's presentation now coming to the first uh, craton that is the dharwar craton cratons are the tectonically stable landmass the southern indian peninsula shield comprises the dharwar cratons in the north and the southern granular terrains in the south with the boundary called as a former lines that former line has separated the northern dharwar cratons and the southern palaghat kaveri suture zones or the pandian mobile belts that palaghat kaveri suture zones divides the northern archean craton maybe which lies in the karnataka or the karnatakin dharwar which is, which is situated in the karnataka and that is for the, therefore it is known as in dharwar craton and the karnataka craton and the southern proterozoic terrains namely the southern granulite or the sgt that southern granulites can be denoted like the sgt in brief and formed by the amalgamation of the different granulite blocks with the distinct evolution history and evolutionary history the dharwar craton essentially covered by the southern states of the karnataka andhra pradesh because uh, the eastern part of the karnataka has been uh, occupied in the, the near about the 61% of the eastern uh, dharwar craton uh, which is situated in the andhra pradesh and the dharwar craton is a typically an archean granulite greenstone terrains which nisic basements or the tonalite and trangemite and granodite the ttg compositions known as a peninsular niche and in this in this dharwarian uh, uh, rocks or in the uh, dharwar cratons we will find the two kinds of the uh, niches that the two kinds of the peninsular niche the peninsular niche first and the peninsular niche second the peninsular niche first which can occur in the uh, western block of the dharwar craton whereas the peninsular niche seconds can occur in the eastern dharwar craton and which is uh, the the peninsular niche first is an older and the peninsular niche second is an anger which is lies in the eastern dharwar craton 
that granite greenstone terrains exposes the rock older than the 2500 million years it is bounded by the southern granulite terrain that is sgt to the south and the eastern ghat mobile belt that is the egmb to the east Arabian Sea to the west and the northwest southeast trending Godavari Grabens and the northeastern Deccan Traps covers the north. This is all about how the different uh, different uh, different uh, morphotectonic units which are fringing to the Dharwar Cretons. The Dharwar Creton is divided into the two subgroups that eastern Dharwar Cretons and the western Dharwar Cretons. With the Chitradurga boundary fault which located along the eastern margin of the Chitradurga Sest Belt and previously the chitra durga sest belt which was or the chitra durga boundary fault was considered as in boundary between or the boundary for 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 the division of the two blocks like western and the eastern and later on the close fit granite has been considered for the uh, separation of the western and the eastern darwar craton some workers believe that the close pit granite, which is located in more than or approximately 50 km east of the Chitradurga boundary fault, represents the boundary between the eastern Dharwar Kraton and the western Dharwar Kraton. And those workers may be the Nakvi and the Roger uh, Gupta and uh, the uh, actually uh, Moyen et al. and others can consider. This is the toralite, tangemite, and the granodite rocks which are occurring in the Dhaborian uh, cratons. This is the typical uh, representation of uh, the geological or the geographical uh, distribution of the Dharwar craton, which is having the two blocks. Now, coming to the detailed uh, classification of uh, the lithology or uh, the different parts of the dharwar craton this is a simplified map of the dharwar cratons which shows the western uh, region this is a western regions and the central region this is the central region from this to this it is a central region this is the central region that central block and uh, this is the western and this is the eastern region actually the chitra durga which can be occur in this eastern western western block chitra durga as well as a baba budan group and the sargur group this is a sargur group sargur group this is a chitra durga group chitra durga and uh, the Baba Budan, we may say, he, this is a Baba Budan Chitra Durga, that Baba Budan and the Chitra Durga, Baba Budan and Chitra Durga, which are also lies in the western sides of the Dhavo Cretons, and certain uh, uh, juvenile uh, uh, bodies, uh, we may refer them as uh, uh, the different kinds of the plutons which are uh, uh, remobilized and which are younger than the western uh, uh, Dharwar cratons or the uh, that the knees which are uh, located towards the western sides and th those may be the granitic plutons and the granitic plutons are situated towards the eastern Dharwar craton. This is the uh, western block and this is the eastern block and this is a central block and this is an eastern block shows a, a young formations. Although the actual boundary between the two cratonic blocks remains the debatable, there are the notable differences in the lithology and the metamorphisms of the two blocks. The western Dharwar craton shows the older rocks and the eastern Dharwar craton shows the younger granitoids and the revoked and the remobilized uh, lithology. The western Dharwar craton is dominantly occupied by the tonalite, transamite and the granodite niches. These are the niches and uh, the niches age may be in 3 to 3.4 giga years or the billion years with the minor cyst belts, particularly the Sargur group, which is uh, also younger than the tonalite, transamite and the granodiorites. And the major cyst belts of the Dharwar age may be 2.9 to 2.6 giga years. And coming to the parts of uh, the eastern Dharwar craton, which is characterized by the voluminous late Archean 
granitoids and of course the age of the late archean granitoids uh, is less than the western dharwarian cratons or the peninsular uh, nice first and that is the dharwar batholiths we may describe as a batholiths different kinds of the batholiths or the uh, intrusive bodies may occur in the eastern dharwar cratons and the minor tonalite transmite granites and the nisus and the thin thin volcanics dominated cyst belts of the dharwar age the western block of the craton comprises the large cyst belts this is uh, known as a dharwar type and accumulated in the distinct sedimentary basins and the eastern block is in characterized by the voluminous juvenile granites the juvenile granites may be the the younger granites those may be the younger granites or the juvenile granites and the remobilized knees with the remnants of the cyst belts are those are known as in cola types the cyst belts in the cratons are the metamorphosed under the green cyst and the amphibolite facies coming to the part of the tectonic evolution of the dharwar craton this is a tectonic tectonism or the tectonic evolution evolution of the dharwar cratons how the eastern dharwar craton or the felsic volcanics uh, actually which is having uh, approximately uh, 2.55 giga years or the billion years age which are uh, supposed to be uh, situated in the eastern dharwar cratons and then ttg tonalite transmite and granitite magmatisms and this is uh, the Uh, tectonic models uh, where the collision can be taken place collision might have taken place and uh, this is uh, the region which is uh, subducted and those subducted portion may be we may say it as a two stage melting of the ocean crust that subducted slabs melting formed in the hydrous melt and due to the formation of the hydrous melts that the hydrous melts and hydrous melted the oceanic crust and that arc crust forming the ttg or the tonalite transmite and the granodite granodiorites and in the later in the in the primitive stages at the time of uh, the volcanic plumes that is juvenile crust melt due to the collision when the collision was taken place uh, more than 3400 uh, billion million years when the continent western block of the dharwar craton has been collided towards the uh, eastern sides and that at the time of the mid oceanic ridges were also formed and certain portion of uh, the subducted region has been uh, exhumed and which was subducted in the asthenosphere this is all about the formation of the dharwar craton so this is the tectonic framework of the indian subcontinent in this tectonic framework you, you may see how the different kinds of the uh, the peninsular regions of the eastern uh, uh, the, the southern cratons and the south eastern and the eastern cratons maybe the dharwar uh, maybe the bastar and the bandara cratons and uh, the eastern indian cratons or the orissa craton which has been lies in the eastern sides in the orissa and those cratons which are supposed to be situated above the citz that citz is supposed to be the satpura mobile belt and then citz can be denoted for the central indian tectonic zone so as far as the concern of uh, your first internal examination which we are going to conducting uh, coming 10th uh, uh, october there will be no connection for there will be no any kind of the questions will be asked by the by your teacher in your first internal examination for 20 marks on the said date uh, we will or myself will restrict uh, below uh, the citz regions what kinds of the uh, that citz itself as well as the three cratons and the three um, a mobile belts can be uh, uh, the question will be around only the three cratons and three mobile belts only so this is all about uh, the different kinds of uh, uh, the formations which can be occur in the western sides of the dharwar craton and the eastern side of the dharwar cratons that kadappa basin which also uh, occurring in the eastern uh, region of the eastern dharwar craton 
and uh, those cra those rocks may be the uh, close pit granite this is the close pit granites which is near about uh, or approximately 50 km or sometimes in a different literature so we may find it 30 to uh, of uh, 20 km or 20 to 30 km width so its width is 20 to 30 km and uh, that the entire portions uh, and eastern uh, granitic uh, belt or the eastern uh, Dharwar Craton's uh, Nisik belt has been disconnected that uh, the close pit granite which is not continuous uh, uh, belt of uh, the earlier formed uh, or the Neo-Archean Neo-Archean uh, plutonic body which is also known as the stitching stitching pluton why it is known as a stitching pluton because which has been amalgamated that the western dharwar craton and eastern dharwar craton has been amalgamated towards each other along the close pit granite and the rightly the close pit granite can be considered as a dividing line of the western dharwar craton and the eastern dharwar craton Those are the Ingo formations, so maybe the plutonic uh, granites that western Dharwar cratons uh, or the plutons or the granites. We may also see the plutons and the granites and these are supposed to be a, a plutonic granites of the eastern Dharwar craton. Those are the plutonic granites. Those plutonic granites are the older or uh, the younger granites as compared to uh, as, as compared to the western uh, Dharwar Nizik belts. This is the this is the Nizik belt. This is the Western Dharwar Nizik belts. And here in the Eastern Dharwar cratons, we will have a different kinds of the repositories of the diamond and the other uh, lamproids or the lamprofa that kimbolites and the lamproids, which is also lies in the uh, Eastern craton, Eastern Dharwar craton. The southern part of the Dharwar Craton exhibits in transition zones, forms and low to high grade rocks. So as we may move towards the southern sides, uh, that uh, the temperature or uh, the metamorphisms uh, we may see which is goes on increasing. That uh, temperature is goes on increasing as we move towards the southern sides. The abundance of the younger granites in the north and the granulites in the south distinguishes the eastern blocks as a reactivated zones and the remobilized nises and the granites around the centrally located Archean nuclei in the western block. Coming to the lithology of the Dharwar Craton, the major part of the Dharwar Craton is covered in an extensive group of the grey niches and designated as a peninsular niche, the western Dharwar Craton. In the western Dharwar Cratons, we will have the peninsular niche and which has a further divided into the older peninsular niche. In the western Dharwar Craton, we will have the peninsular niche first or the older peninsular niche and the younger, that is the peninsular niche, the second based on the isotopic age data. And these niches contains the enclaves of the deformed and the metamorphosed amphibolites and the granulite grade of the rocks indicating the existence of the older group of the sediments and associated igneous intrusives are referred to as a subgroup group. Lithologically, these types including the fischites, quartzites with the layers of the chromites and then barites, biotite cyst with the garnet and kyanite, sillimanite, cardiorite, scorundums, starolite, marbles and the calc silicate rocks. Besides serpentinized chromatites, banded iron formations, and then chromite bearing ultramafix complexes are the prominent uh, uh, rocks which can occur in the Dharwarian region. So, this is supposed to be the close pit granites which has uh, uh, been separated the western and the eastern blocks of the Dharwar cratons. And mainly in the eastern block or the eastern uh, uh, Dharwarian cratons. Uh, we will have a uh, different kinds of uh, the uh, uh, the gold gold bearing formations or the different gold mines maybe the hatti and raichurs and uh, the kolar in sandur narayan pits raichurs uh, hatti 
and uh, many different kinds of uh, the uh, Veliguli and uh, the Nellore and so on. Those kinds of the mines are supposed to be near about the 18 coal bearing mines has been situated to the eastern Dharwar Kraton and the western Dharwar Kraton is known for the different kinds of uh, uh, the uh, the different kinds of uh, uh, the niches particularly that uh, uh, that the Chitra Durga and uh, the other formations which is situated in the western sides of the Dharwar Kraton. Coming to the part of the western Dharwar Kratons or the oldest niche is known as a peninsular niche is consisting mainly of the amphibolite faces and niches of the tonalite and transmite granodiuretic compositions and which can be denoted by the TTG with the four major components namely a layered and embanded complexes consisting of the quartz feldspathic biotite niches alternating with the amphibolites and the ultramafic materials. The banded horn blend biotite, biotites and the migmatite niches, banded migmatite garnet bearing and the parasonesis, and the homogeneous transmite and the granitic plutons. These niches act as the basement for the widespread of the belt and the cysts. Actually, the peninsular niche has given the uh, importance uh, as a monuments or the monumental importance has been given by the archaeological survey as well as the geological survey of India has given the national importance. This monument over the typical exposures of the peninsular knees, that peninsular knees, a uh, geological terms for the complex mixtures of the granitic rocks. What are the peninsular knees? It is supposed to be the, uh, 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 as, a, as a complex mixtures of the granitic rocks extensively developed in the peninsula of India and the terms was coined by the Dr. W. F. Smith of the Moistar Geological Department in the 1916. In the 1916, the peninsula niche concept has been coined by Dr. W. F. Smith and who was belonging from the geological survey of the Mysore. And the peninsula niche is uh, as a, among the boldest rocks of the earth dating back to the 3,000 million, 3, uh, million years or 3 billion years old and the antiquity of these rocks has attracted the geologists all over the world and has given the rise the erudite and in scientific papers on the evolutions of the earth by the pioneers of the Mysore Geological Department. Geological Survey of India and the uh, scholars from the academy, some some query of this knees still continues to be the knees and the other materials. It means that the geological uh, monuments as uh, the peninsula or niche has the special importance for the understanding of the evolution. Not only the evolution of the Dharwar crater and so on, but it has played a significant role for the uh, understanding and the evolution of the entire earth. So this is the uh, peculiar pictures or uh, beautiful pictures which is exposed uh, knees hillocks at the Lal Bagh uh, near the Bengaluru. So this is the peninsular knees, one of the uh, cordial towers of the Bengaluru and which shows that peninsular knees, this is a peninsular peninsular knees, maybe the older peninsular knees and that status has been uh, decorated as a national geological monuments uh, as a peninsular niche uh, around the Lal Bagh. The peninsular niche second, it is mainly comprises the niche rocks with the granodiuretic sort and granitic composition representing the remobilized parts, remobilized or the reworked parts of the older clusters with the abundant younger granitoids and is found in the eastern parts of the Karnataka states. So the concept is very clear that peninsular knees, peninsular knees first and the peninsular knees second which can geographically uh, uh, shows a different localities. Those are located in the western Dharwar Kraton and uh, those peninsular knees second can be occurred in the eastern Dharwar Kraton. And the parts of the Karnataka state knees is in common and in widely distributed type of the metamorphic rocks. 
that peninsular knees are supposed to be the metamorphic rocks and those are the metamorphic rocks this is the metamorphic these are the metamorphic rocks metamorphic rocks and those metamorphic rocks are deformed by the high temperature and the high pressure metamorphic processes acting on the formations composed of the igneous and the sedimentary rocks so this band shows that the compression coming to the part of the individual uh, part or the individual classification or the litho uh, units of the dhawar craton the dhawar craton has been uh, divided into two portion this is supposed to be the this is a older peninsular knees and this older peninsular knees is supposed to be the peninsular knees first and this is the this is uh, supposed to be the anger peninsular knees and this anger peninsular knees is supposed to be the peninsular knees second and this is the close pit granite close pit granite can be uh, shown like this and these are uh, the different kinds of uh, uh, the meta basalts are supposed to be exposed here in the baba budan and the chitradurga shear zones how the close pit granite has been evolved uh, actually at the end of the darwarian cycle it marked by the close pit granite represented by the granitic intrusions and which is a approximately 50 km wide belt and more than 400 km long it belts uh, it is an anger potassium granitic mark the major geo sutures in joining between the two distinct crystal block western blocks with the number of the well developed and low grade granite greenstone belts with the iron and the manganese ores in the western western dharwar cratons uh, we may have the manganese and the iron formation and the eastern block marked by only the knees granitics and the granodiorotic compositions including the number of the narrow linear blades collisions of the two blocks has in resulted in the emplacement of the granite granites along the line join line joining junctions of the two blocks and besides besides there are the other isolated masses of the anger granite or outcroppings away from these linearly disposed granitic blocks like the chitradurga arkskyers and the uh, other uh, uh, torangal and the belleri raichur east belts this is a representation of uh, the close pit granite how the close pit granites can show the different zonations at the outer or the periphery we may have the granitoids and the migmatites and the schist belts so those are the schist belts which can be occur in isolated patches in the northern sides and those are in, in disseminated forms actually more than the 60% of the state of the andhra pradesh make up the present part of the dharwar cratons and the 10% of the cratonic parts covered by the rocks of the protrusive platformal basins may be the kadappa pakhal and the bhima those those kadappa pakhal and the bhimas are supposed to be the repository for the diamond diamond and other um, minerals the different units of the peninsular knees complex including the three uh, discrete units and these compositions may be the nizik and ortho and in horn blend granodiorites and the anger granodioritics apart from this the supracrystal rocks from the andhra pradesh occurs in the cratonic parts and it is in marginal zones marked by the different kinds of the volcanic activities and those may be the volcanic conglomerates and the banded iron formations can occur Nellore schist belt is supposed to be the world's uh, uh, richest uh, richest belt for the uh, mica and that Nellore mica belt will be the world's richest belt which shows in subordinate representation of the meta sediments and prominent greenstone belts occur in the southern parts of the state of the Andhra Pradesh the dharwar granite the dharwar uh, granitic greenstone uh, belts may have the different kinds of the inclination particularly the north north east and the south south west so this is all about the inclination of the outcrops after the granitic emplacement of the craton attained the rigidity the rigidity has been taken place at the time of the in phase and later magmatic events like the uh, mafic dikes activity and the kimberlite activity took place along the deep crustal faults and the fractures so this is all about the inclination or the uh, or the uh, or the attitude of uh, the different kinds of uh, the bodies which are lies in the eastern as well as the western sides of the darwar craton 
Coming to the part of the stratigraphic sequences or the stratigraphy of the Darwar cratons, the basement uh, which is uh, not identified particularly, but the uh, older niches which may have the uh, more than 3,000 uh, million year old Arkin rocks can occur in the in the base. And uh, as we move towards the old for younger formation, that kimberlite and mafic dikes and the potassic uh, granites, which may also ha have the age particularly from uh, the 2,600 million to 1,600 million years, that kimberlite are supposed to be the uh, very youngest. And uh, this is having a repository for the copper and zinc, copper and zinc, and the uranium and then gold depositions, which is occurring in the in this region. This is a brief general stratigraphy of the Darwar Craton. Coming to the part of uh, the eastern block of the Dharwar Craton, the linear belts of the oldest supracrustal rocks, particularly the Sargur, Nagli Halli, Satyana, Satyamangalam, and uh, the Vainad, the regions are mainly represented by the intercalated sequences of the sediments and the volcano and the volcanogenic assemblages, which are locales of the deposition of the minerals. The important mineralizations within these blocks are the deposits of the Kolar and the Ramgiri and the Penkacherla, Hatti Muski, Gadang, Raichu in Karnataka and Vainad cyst belts in the Kerala. So those are the important gold bearing formations within the eastern part of the peninsular regions and with the peninsular knees and the platformal sediments of the protozoic ages and the diamondiferous kimberlite and the lamproids bodies which are also intruded. The kimberlite and the lamproids host the rocks for the distributed in the states of the Andhra Pradesh and the Karnataka. In the two states of the India, particularly in the Andhra Pradesh and the Karnataka, we may have the kimberlite bodies. Eastern Dharwar Kraton host those bodies along the intersections of the post Kadapa and reactivated, that is east, 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 northeast, and west, southwest, and northwest, southeast fracture faults systems and or the closure of the domal structure. Along those structures, we may find a different kinds of the kimberlites and the lamproids. Coming to the parts of the tectonic setup favored the emplacement of the more than 65 kimberlites and 46 lamproid bodies which are situated in the eastern region of the eastern Dharwar Kraton. That kimberlites discovered in the southern India uh, till now are restricted the in eastern Dharwar Kraton, so which was an established by approximately uh, 2,500 million years and distributed in the four kimberlite fields. The first one is in Vajrakaru kimberlite, second is in Narayan Pet kimberlite, and the third is a Tungabhadra, and fourth one is in Raichur kimberlite fields, which all are situated in the eastern Dharwar Kraton. And, and, and the lamp propires or the lamp fruits which are also occurring in the different fields may be in the Ramagudu and Krishna deposits are reported from the cyst belts and the Gadwal and Chitradurga and uh, Holse Narsi Purs and uh, other uh, regions of the Nellor. So this is all about the uh, Kadapa basins uh, where we may have the kimberlite formation particularly. This is a Vajrakaru kimberlite. Uh, pipe or the kimberlite, kimberlite formation we may find here. So this is all about the region in which we may uh, explore the kimberlite. That kimberlites uh, coming to the part of the different uh, uh, kimberlite exposures. This location map shows that the different kinds of the pipes of the kimberlites in the uh, in the eastern eastern Dharwar cratons that kimberlite fields uh, which are already uh, explained that kimberlites will be like this way uh, that kimberlite can be a globular in shape these all are the kimberlites which can occur in the eastern block of the Dharwar craton this is a typical picture of the embedded diamond in the kimberlite kimberlite field This is all about the uh, geological map of the eastern Dharwar Kraton or the southern Indian deposits, uh, which shows uh, that the Protozoic Purana Basin, this is a Protozoic Purana Basin, which is also known as a Kadapa Supergroup. 
there is a transition zones which can separates the eastern coasts uh, and the eastern dharwar craton and those marginal belts or the marginal transition zones can be known as an mt chats between the dharwar craton in the west and the eastern uh, mobile belt or the protrusive mobile belt in the east and this zone is underlain by the archean schistos and granitic rocks and was intensively reactivated during the the middle to late protrusive fields actually the prakasham alkaline provinces according to the lila nandan was a loci of the igneous activities with the emplacement of the anorthosites along the mobile belts the emplacement of the anorthosite has been takes place along the eastern ghat mobile belt and that the marginal transition zones a of the eastern margins of the kadappa basin and the eastern ghat mobile belts together known as the prakasham alkaline provinces what is the prakasham alkaline provinces that the regions which which lies between the uh, mt chet or the marginal transition zones in the eastern margins of the kadappa basin and the eastern ghat mobile belts together known as the prakasham alkaline provinces this is the prakasham alkaline provinces actually the uh, nello that is the world's famous mica muscovite mine which is located in the gudur uh, located in the nello sister belt actually nello and the gudur those are supposed to be located in the uh, in the tirupati in the tirupati uh, region and the tirupati was uh, the tirupati city has been founded by the uh, in the 6th century by the king pallava and this is all about the pallava's uh, dynasty and he has created certain kinds of the uh, structures coming to the part of the nellore cyst belt which is supposed to be the world's richest richest mica uh, belt and according to the initiative initiation which was taken by the geological survey of uh, india particularly from the nagpur around the 1994 and which was also uh, explore explo uh, that the region has been uh, uh, excavated by the geological survey of india and according to the uh, sachadeva uh, nowadays we are not able to compete uh, or the price of the market is goes on depleting by means of the presence or the availability of the alternatives to the uh, mica materials or the insulators this is in muscovites or the vermiculite this is a vermiculite and this is a muscovite which was recovered from the nellore cyst belts as a richest depository or the repository and this is the this kinds of the rocks can occur in the prakasham alkaline provinces as a anorthosites and this is a phaneritic and intrusive igneous rocks the next most important part of this indian stratigraphy will be the southern granulite terrains that southern granulite terrain which is also known as the protrusive mobile belts and which lies to the southern portion of the dharwar craton the southern granulite terrain that is also denoted as in sgt is in mainly exposed in the states of the which is exposed in the three states particularly tamil nadu kerala and southern part of the karnataka compro- comprising uh, the different kinds of uh, the hills particularly which has the three blocks first one is a nilgiri block or the northern block the middle block is a madurai block and the southern block is known as a trivendram blocks and this can be studied by the different kinds of uh, uh, the suture zones or the su- different kinds of uh, the belts this is in granitic or the greenstone belts which is extended up to the northern region of the uh, transition zone particularly that is southern granulite terrains and uh, the trivendram block and the nagar coil blocks which shows a different uh, uh, that close pit granite which is also exposed in this region so that protrusive terrains comprises that the periyar madurai granulite belts and the and the other kinds of the uh, belts or the kaveri shear zone considered as an ancient suture and uh, the gopal krishnan has been worked on the same region the southern granulite terrain uh, which flanks the palaghat gap in the north and the akankovil shear zone rocks predominantly chanokitics and other niches with the occasional assemblages of the meta sediments uh, which are occurring in this region within the southern parts of the palaghat gap that chanokites and patches and then hornblende biotitic niches can be uh, predominant 
In the Kela regions, it is an important segment of the SGT where the major units of the Aukian uh, continental crust such as in granulites and granite and the knees and the greenstones are preserved. The southern parts of the states of the Aconcoglisia zones exposes in assemblages of the magmatized and the metasedimentary and the metaigneous rocks which are occurring in the southern side. The southern tip of the peninsula is represented by the Nagar coil and the Chanokaitic massive. Actually, Nagar coil block is distinctly Chanokaitic units with the metasedimentary intercalations. The several intrusive igneous uh, uh, bodies uh, which can be occurred in this uh, region, particularly in the southern granulite terrains, those may be the alkaline related plutonism was in widespread in the northern parts of the uh, Velour and the Dhamapuri of the Salem region. Besides, the silica saturated alkali plutons can also occur, and the, the ultramafic bodies may also occur in the Salem regions and manganese deposits. Manganesite deposits is considered to be the related by the cyanide carbonatite activities. The terrain might be in witness to the several cycles of the metamorphisms and the most pervasive uh, beings in uh, approximately in 550 million year span African granulite phases events considered to be the isotopic systematics. And coming to the part of the stratigraphy of uh, the uh, southern granulite terrains, the basement is also unknown, but more than 3,200 million old rocks can occur at the base at the Satyamangalam groups in the Tamil Nadu, which is known for the uh, uh, that lead, zinc, copper, gold, uh, gold and cadmiums. And as we move towards, uh, as we move towards the top or the younger formations, particularly up to the 550 to 390 million year old, that the younger granites, uh, uh, which which is uh, abundant, and the east, uh, that southern granular terrain, which is also known for the uranium, thorium, as well as the rare earth elements, which can be the repository for the uh, rare earth elements. SGT is associated with the metallogeny of the metallic minerals and those metallic minerals uh, along with the mafic and ultramafic anorthosite complexes and uh, the other uh, uh, uranium, thorium and the uh, beryllium's and other mineralizations can occur in the different districts, particularly in the Madurai districts of the Tamil Nadu. Then the next uh, important or the third component of the presentation is an Eastern Ghat mobile belt. How, what is the Eastern Ghat mobile belt? Actually, the Dharwar Craton is in bounded in the northeast by extending for over a 1000 kilometer covering a distance of more than 60 kilometer from the Andhra Pradesh from an angle in the southern part of the state of the Orissa and northeasterly directions along the eastern coast of the Indian Peninsula. It is widest in the Orissa, approximately 300 kilometers, which is in, which is as wide as a 300 kilometer or more than 300 kilometers, uh, and it is covers in major parts of the southern Orissa. This is in granulite terrains, mainly made up of the charnokaitic and condolite in quartzites and cal alkali and pyroxenes and granulites and leptinites. So this is the lithology of the Eastern Ghat mobile belt. That EGMB includes the two broad lithostratigraphic units that is the charnokaitic condolitic groups together forming the Eastern Ghat supergroup. The charnokites and condolites are supposed to be forming the Eastern Ghat supergroup included by the layered anorthosites and associated mafic and the uh, chromiferous ultramafics and the alkaline complexes. This is a typical Proterozoic mobile belt. The Eastern Ghat mobile belt is supposed to be the, a typical Proterozoic, Proterozoic mobile belt, and which is uh, which is cuts the Archean cratonic blocks, and it is in characterized by strong linearity, ductile deformation, high grade metamorphisms, and in high gravity gradients along the contact zones. And the age of this, uh, uh, maybe the data shows that it provides new insights to the chronostratigraphy of the events of the Precambrian terrains with the uh, uh, from the late Archean to the uh, Pan African orogeny. And the Eastern Ghat uh, mobile belt uh, in the Orissa, separated from the Western Orissa sectors by the abrupt geomorphic and the and the geophysical bogger anomaly discontinuating, also deconformed by the deep seismic soundings and extends uh, to the southern tip of the Orissa of the Sambalpur. 
the eastern boundary of the eastern ghat mobile belt is probably marked by the another major uh, lineaments along which the abrupt meet of the east coast alluvium that chilka lake on north sides occurring along this lineament the eastern ghat mobile belts ca uh, can contact between the cratonic niches of the eastern ghat mobile belt is a major tectonic feature marked by the grab bro anarto sites and the alkaline plutons of the middle proterozoic age near about the 1600 to 1000 million year old nellore sister belt in the southeast and khammam sister belts in the northeast those are situated and the eastern ghat mobile belt granulites are the rich in the rear earth elements that potassium rich alkalis composed of the nubidium uh, thorium barium thorium rich of the southern granulite terrain this is a typical uh, map of the eastern ghat mobile belt which is goes on the decreasing and which has been skirting towards the dharwar crater particularly the eastern dharwar crater so we may find here or the north eastern dharwar cratons and the different kinds of the uh, alkaline provinces or uh, those things can be uh, reported the belt is famous for its large resources formed mainly by the supra crystals or the super enrichment of the aluminum from the metapolitic or the uh, prot protoliths can be also occur in this uh, uh, regions and this is in creso beryl different kinds of the metamorphic uh, minerals particularly the creso beryl say aqua marine in ruby sapphires in topaz and the garnet garnet resources and in high grade and uh, the ore are being exploited for, uh, locally so which has uh, the repository of the various kinds of the minerals this is a typical kinds of the charnocite which is uh, having uh, which can occur bearing a ortho in a quartz fel quartz feldspar rock formed at the high temperature and the pressure and commonly found in the granite in the granulite faces and metamorphic uh, regions Uh, this is the charnocite and this is in granulite which is occurring in the eastern uh, dharwar craton and this is uh, the eastern uh, mobile belt and this is a migmatite migmatites are in very high grade metamorphic rocks that formed the partial melting of the gneisses and the mafic minerals have in high melting temperatures and still retains the metamorphic and foliation this is the anorthosite is a visually a coarse grained these are the coarse grained which can be a, a basalts to a kimberlites maybe the composition of this region the fourth composition of this uh, today's presentation will be the singabum orissa craton or the eastern indian craton this is also known as the eastern indian craton or the orissa craton or the singabum craton so which is known for the iron orogeny and which can have the its equivalent because the oldest rocks in india can be the rocks which are occurring in the eastern indian cratons or in the uh, orissa craton which are more than the 3600 million years and those can be uh, known as an older metamorphic tonalite gneisses and as we move towards the uh, the end phase of this orogeny or that cratons we may have the different kinds of uh, or the that singabum batholiths or coinchar or uh, other iron ore groups will have the less uh, age the singabum cratons which is a north eastern indian contains ore of the oldest rock successions in the world so this uh, the north eastern region or the north eastern craton of the indian subcontinent which is supposed to be the oldest oldest in the world or in india and that is the world's most uh, uh, important succession comparable only the uh, the uh, ishua greenstone belts of the greenlands and in abitabi belts in the uh, in the ontarios and in uh, Uh, Quebec, that is uh, that Pilbara and the Kapawal cratons, uh, which can be only the competent uh, as for the age of uh, uh, and its origin. That Singapore craton, uh, which is uh, a triangular regions, and that is uh, the regions flanking to the Bastar cratons in the west side, and it is bounded the copper thrust belt that is in CTB, also called as a Singapore shear zone, in the uh, Sukinda thrust and eastern granulite belts or eastern Ghat granulite belt in the southwest, and geophysically that EIC Eastern Indian craton comprises the western parts of the states of the West Bengal. Bengal and the Jharkhands and Orissa. That the inclusion of the older rocks, like the older metamorphic groups or the OMG, is an igneous and the sedimentary rocks and metamorphosed by the amphibolitic phases. 
and the presence of the large number of the includes or the that is the older metamorphic groups and uh, association occurrings although the major sections of this crater and the area has been uh, covered near about the 10000 square kilometer so this is the stratigraphic succession of the eastern indian craton or the orissa or the uh, singapore craton where the uh, 3,775 million year old rocks can be known as an older metamorphic rocks and the different kinds of the unconformity which is also uh, reported in these regions. There are three unconformities uh, which is separating from the uh, older to younger and so on. That iron ore groups that is in IOG is in volcanic sedimentary rocks which can be have which are having 3,100 million year old. And as we move towards the Nevar dolerite dikes and sills and Mayurbhanj granites and then gap on earth site ultramapics and Kolhan groups, the age of the uh, rocks will go on uh, increasing from the Nevar dolerites to the Kolhan groups. There was a pause in the crustal growth uh, followed by the intrusion of the Singapore granites was uh, interrupted by the sedimentary cycles and those sedimentary cycles may be the Singapore groups and in volcano sedimentary cycle that is a Dhanjori group respectively. Singapore group starts with the Chaibasa formations containing the garnets, starolites, kyanite bearings, mica system with the numerous bands of the quartzites and in artho and then para horn blend system. This is followed by the Dalvam formations at the top containing the phyllites with the few quartzites bands and then chloride magnetites and then chloride, chlo chloride phyllites and, epi and epidiorite seals can occur at the end phase. Another large protozoic basin is called as a simplipal basin which is also located in this uh, uh, region and compos compositionally these lava displays the three distinct types of the low grade meta basalts and andesites and then meta uh, oligoclase andesites. The protozoic volcano sedimentary cycle is followed by the intrusions of the large isolated granotite bodies like the that is in Kuila Pulse and the Chakradharpur granites which can be denoted by the CKPG which is located in the northeastern sites. That is uh, CKPG is an east-west trending enclosed body with the numerous enclaves of the amphibolites and the other Arcos conglomerates and the quartz. That uh, the next is in eastern uh, Indian craton spots is uh, the uh, Chota uh, Nagpur granite knees extending in the Chhattisgarh, West Bengal, Orissa, and Jharkhand up to the parts of the distinct Purulia, Bankura, and uh, Birbhum of the uh, Mandinipur, West Bengals in the east forms an integrals, integral segments of the Precambrian continental shield of the eastern India. The northeastern Indian uh, India and the Meghalaya is a huge geomorphic up arc and Precambrian metamorphic rocks which are exposed and those are having the Mesa Bonai uh, and the Rakha mines of the Charkhand and Chota Nagpur granite niche complex which is known for the copper, uranium, iron, manganese, chromium, vanadium, titanium, gold, copper, molybdenum, tin and niobium, lithium, beryllium, lead, copper, Phosphorites, mica, and manganese, berry, beryllium, tin, tungstens, uranium, and the and the uh, tantalums, which are the most important uh, metals, can be recovered from this region. So coming to the parts of the Satpura Mobile Belt and the CITZ, that is uh, the Eastern Indian, uh, that is uh, that is the CITZ, Indian, uh, in, that is CITZ, is also known as the Satpura Mobile Belt and which can have the uh, the composition of the uh, CGG that is a Chota group or the Chota Nagpur granite Nizix complexes and uh, the Eastern Indian tectonic zone that is EITZ, Eastern Indian tectonic zones. That Central Indian Shield, Central Indian Shield is a mosaic of the two crustal blocks. This is a Satpura, Central Indian Precambrian Shield and the CITZ and the Satpura Mobile. Do not confuse with the CITZ, Central Indian Precambrian Shield Zone and the Satpura Mobile Belt. Because the Satpura Mobile Belt which is having the two most important components and those components may be, uh, those components may be, the first one will be supposed to be uh, the northern regions which can have, uh, which can have the, the different kinds of the Vindian formations and the southern is known for the saucer. 
Sasar Orojini. Sasar Orojini and which is famous for the iron and the manganese deposition. The central Indian shield is in mosaic of the two crystal provinces, the southern crystal provinces or the SCP and the northern central provinces, the NCP, is separated by the prominent east-west trending central Indian CI, yes, that is central Indian shear zone or the central Indian tectonic zone. CIS and CITZs are one and the same. The western part of the sector, that is the major part of the Maharashtra and the western parts of the Madhya Pradesh is bounded by the thick pile of the Deccan traps and the southern and, and the southern crystal provinces is with the Archean nuclei known as in Buster Craton. And we will discuss about the different kinds of the cratons later on. That the western parts of the sector that measure Maharashtra and the western parts uh, which is having the Buster Craton. This is the stratigraphy of the CIT, CIPS, that is the Central Indian uh, uh, Precambrian Shield, which is uh, having the different kinds of the Bundelkhand and the Beya and the Sukmanis, Bengpalnis, as we move towards the topper regions and the youngest formations, that Kimberlites may also exposed in the, in the Musgaon and the uh, Hindutta, Daimyers and uh, uh, the Khairagad belt and the granite in the Satpura belt as the Thirudinis which are which is the part of the saucer group is also exposed around uh, this uh, CITZ and which is having the age of the 800 million years. The next or the fifth part of this presentation will be the Buster Craton. This is a Buster Craton. Actually, the Buster Craton can be denoted by the BC is in boundaries to the northeastern by the uh, Mahanadi Grabbins and to the southwest by the Pranahita Godavari Grabbins, to the northwest by the Satpura Mobile Belt and to the southeast by the Eastern Ghat Mobile Belt. This is all kinds of the mobile belts and the cratons which are fringing to the Buster Craton and the cratonic components of the Buster includes the basement niche which is having the 3.5 billion year followed by the Sukma metamorphic suits in Bengpal and the Bailadila group and the other uh, uh, Sukma and the Bengpal groups rocks consisting same low to the medium grade of the volcano sedimentary rocks. The Bailadila group consisting the phyllite and the banded iron formation is the most peculiar features of the Bailadila formations. And then Sakoli build comprises the distinct low grade supra crystals of the bimodal volcanic spellites, quartzites, and the Amgaon is, is which is having geologically 2.5 billion years. And uh, uh, this uh, shows that uh, uh, the uh, Bundelkhand knees granulitic terrains includes the supracrystal belts and uh, over sequences of the Vindian and the Bizawar supergroup. So this is the map of uh, the Buster Craton. Actually, the uh, platformal basin of the Chhattisgarh region, which is also lies in the same uh, craton, and this is supposed to be a protozoic formation. There was one question in the 2021 examination of GATE, which, which was conducted by the IIT Delhi, and that uh, whether the Gundardi is belonging from the Chhattisgarh formation or the or not. So this was the question in the GATE examination 2021. So this map represents the Buster Craton showing in protozoic sedimentary basins, uh, actually in Indravati and uh, Karir, uh, Pakhal, Sukma and the Chhattisgarh. So those are the protozoic basins. And this entire uh, Buster Craton has been fringed with the southwestern sides to the Dharwar Craton, southeastern sides to the Eastern Ghat Mobile Belt, northwestern sides to the Singhbhum Cratons and the Manadi Rift, and the northwestern sides, which is separated from or fringing towards the Satpura Mobile Belts. Those are situated. That the northern northern crystal provinces, including the central Indian tectonic suture zones with the niche supracrystals, granites, litho associations of the Mahakoshal saucer, Betul, and Chindwada belts are the granulites in the saucer terrains, and the Bundelkhand niche and the granitoids terrains with the inclusion of the minor supracrystal belts covers the sequence of sub the Vindian Bizawar supergroups. So, this is the uh, region of uh, the Mahakoshal supracrystal belts in the central region. 
The Archean niche and the high-grade granulite charnocytes rocks are exposed in this regions around the Godavari in and in as far as the concern of the Maharashtra, this include this including the niche rocks of the Pranita Godavari Valley, charnocytes suits of the rocks along with the Vain Ganga Valley and the Bandara Chandrapur districts, niches associated with the Bastar area in the Nagpur and Sioni and Gundia. Bandara and Ranjangao sectors which are occupied by the Amgao group. So this is all about the stratigraphy or the general geological map of the Bastar Craton where the different kinds of the Thirodi formations in uh, Sitasangi, Lohangi, Mansar, Chorbauli, Juniwani, Bichua and Artho, uh, Arthonis and the Granites as well as the Alluviums which are exposed in this region. The quartz bands Quartz head bands of the Bailadila extends along the strikes of the several kilometers of the south southern parts of the Gurchuruli districts and interbedded with the meta sedimentary rocks. Actually, the uh, Adani group has been initiated for the exploration of the iron ore mining from uh, the Bastar Craton, particularly in the Dantewara districts of the Chhattisgarh, and which is belonging from the Bastar Craton. This is all about the stratigraphy of the Bastar Cretons. Uh, different kinds of uh, the uh, formations can be shown uh, over here. And this is the Nandagao group. So, uh, actually, the Nandagao and Bijli Volcanics and Pitepani. Basically, again, that Pitepani, whether the Pitepani is the part of uh, the uh, Nandagao or the Dongargarh so Dongar group or not, it was a question in the gate examination 2021. Uh, uh, 2021 that the Pitepani uh, basic volcanics uh, which was the uh, part of the question in 2021 gate examination that basically consisting mainly of the rhyolites and the sandstones Pitepani volcanics including the massive and the perforated basalts. Coming to the part of the Bastar Craton and its uh, parts uh, actually this is a Dongargad supergroup. The Dongargad supergroups uh, at the one hand may have the Amgao group as a basement or the knees and at the second, uh, that halbitolar, hyolytic, brexia and conglomerates may occur. Actually, uh, there are the two ways of the classification of the Dongargarh supergroup. The Dongargarh supergroup may be classified into two portions, that is a Nandagao at the bottom and the Khairagad at the top, which are separated by the unconformity. At the bottom of the Nandagao groups, uh, we may have the Bisli and which is uh, the Bisli or Hyolites, which may separate from the Pitepani volcanic by means of the presence of the unconformity. The Pitepani volcanics, Dongargarh granites, again following by the unconformity, then bar, then uh, Bartalo formations, Sitagota formations, Kurutola formations and then Mangikuta volcanics which are occurring above the Khairagad groups or on the, uh, on the, uh, on the upper portion of the Dongargad supergroup. And here the Pitepani, uh, Chan Suresh formations, Sitagota, Kurutola, Mangikuta and there were the unconformity or the intrusive contacts followed by the Dongargad granites. So this was all about uh, the formation, uh, the particular, the different formation of uh, uh, the today's uh, uh, talk, and uh, and coming to the few parts uh, of uh, uh, the presentation. For example, that uh, uh, actually uh, this presentation is is mainly made for the uh, benefit of the students, and uh, which is a non-profitable. And whatever the references and the uh, sites has been cited by mine, so the credit of all the resources will go to the respective authors. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much.